Results-based creating. What to do when there's when the results you need aren't happening. All right, just take what we just talked about, play it back. <laughs> 20 minutes. Just work harder. Can you give us a yeah. specific example here? Context. Sure. So, obviously, like... Let me guess. Thing. Any piece of content you put out with Casey flops. <laughs> well... Aside from that, that's uh, actually doing well. The last two pieces, yeah, we're, like. we're starting to f- we're starting to find a little niche. Yeah. Starting, we're starting to cook yeah. a little bit. Yeah, there's yeah. a little cooking going yeah. on uh, on my personal stuff. So on like the Arsenal Academy stuff, there's a couple of really young kids who are like and they're scoring seven goals a game. Yeah, and so my TikToks are seeing two hundred to three hundred thousand views of TikTok. Wow. But what happens when that's going to be done, right? Like, what do you do? Like, let's say you're a restaurant person and there's no new hot restaurants in New York, like. How do you continue to use, like, the tools that you have? And clearly you're creating content in a way that people are liking it. It's not just about the results, but the results are helping you push it. Like, where do you go from there? Like, what is the next step to continue that little bit of a rise and peak that you're seeing without, like, you don't want to just uh, go back to 1,000-view yeah. TikToks? So my strategy would be look at the content that is performing well. What is making that perform well? It's not that the person has seven goals. That It helps the content. But is it the hook? Is it the editing? Is it the tone? Is it the background music? Is it uh, the type of content? Like people aren't really making much content about younger Arsenal players, right? So like they're starving for that content. So I would, I would figure out what that is. And then I would find content that you could apply to that. First of all, no one's gone to every single restaurant. Like, no one has got... You could do historical arsenal. You could right, do that's, So, like, that's my summer plan was, yeah. like, basically just to go back and do what the best players from 2022 in the Academy, 21, like, once a week. You could it. do that. You could do... You could look at the best Arsenal players or best Premier League players uh, of all time and say, here's what they looked like when they were Academy players and match them up with younger kids. Like... There's always, I yeah, feel like, ways I, I, to and I think a lot of what you're asking is like I'm, I'm kind of like jumping on the back of breaking news, like recent news that's right. that's happening. What happens in the week where there's not breaking news type things? And I think a lot of that comes from internal inspiration. Like when you're watching content, what are you seeing? Like fuck, that was kind of cool. Like how do I spin off of that? And I think what you just brought up, that type of, I don't know why, but I love the content when. Someone uh, in like the football space. Someone will be like, "These were the top ten like high school recruits yeah. from those. like same." It's They're like that so is a fun. like it would be like these are the top ten high school recruits from like 2014. What are they doing now? Yeah. And it'll be like three guys like you might have heard of one all star, and you're like, "That's so sick." He was <laughs> yeah. like number seven. Like I think that's a really cool. And then it's like Kevin White was right like first, and that content, exactly yeah. that's like deep research content. Like sure. that's what appeals to people, and then you tag nostalgia. And that, but but that would be that person probably found that content. Because they identified that content that's working well for me is about nostalgic content. Mm. And I know that I've been doing that. Now I'm going to take this spin on it. So you got to identify what it is. That yeah. I think those are really cool. Like that itself, the fact that you were like, that's fucking cool. And you know you can apply that to what you're doing right now. Other people will probably find that cool. You know what I mean? Like I, I think that's what you're looking for. Sometimes take yourself out of the creatorship part of it and just be a consumer. And, and ask yourself, like, as you're flipping through, you might have to flip through a thousand videos. Be like, that was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. What can I do with that? Is there something I can do with that kind of thing? And it's 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 almost like biding your time until the next big, like, seven goal pop-off yeah. happens. But that's another thing. It will cycle, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that is, that's just life. I will say, like, Gary V loves to do, like, you could, like, literally fucking anything and make a $70,000 job out of it. There are certain markets and topics that I actually do think are a touch too small. Like, Will's doing Arsenal. They're one of the biggest clubs in the world. They have millions and millions of fans. Soccer's so big. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, we've had the guys who run a Mariners podcast, and I've just asked them, like, what is your goal? Because if your goal is to be the biggest biggest Mariners podcast in the world. Damn, that's Lyle. I forgot to email him back. Biggest Mariners podcast in the world. Sorry, Lyle, if you watch this. It, that's fine. I do think that is big enough to get a full-time job and to, to make enough wealth from. But, like, you can't – you won't become – that market is not big enough, in my opinion, to where you're going to have, like, a million followers just talking about the Mariners. Because you would have to capture, like, every single Mariner fan. In sure, the world. but I, I think when you're that – like, you is, is, his, is his goal to have a million followers? Like, why did you just choose that as, like, the thing I'm that said he wouldn't have? There are there are certain – and when we're talking in sports, like, if you're going to be a Sacramento Kings creator, 
you are going to have to ride a lot more of those waves and know yeah. that your ceiling is just smaller. Sure. Like, it just is. So, I think I don't want to give people pause, but Dynasty. Like, Dynasty is a smaller ceiling than general fantasy. Yes. It just is. Yes. It's more engaged. It's more dedicated. You can still monetize it. I was going to say. better, but. I agree with what you're saying, but I also think, like, those people, the people that get into those types of niches are, like, that's that's never their it's good to open their eyes to it, but it's never yeah. their mindset. They're like, oh, f- I love the Mariners. I love everything about them. But I'm probably not going to make, con- I'm not going to like be super passionate because the ceiling's not there in my content kind of thing. Yeah, I just think it's, that is a worry of mine. I if, also think most you- of the time when there's not as many people, that usually means there's an opportunity to make each person matter more yeah. and worth more. So like Dynasty, we might have 5% of the subscriber base I so strongly believe that we can make just as much money from our dynasty stuff as we could our redraft stuff, despite having five yeah, percent of high high engagement. Right, and I think I, I, I think most small niche things have that capability. You just have to be creative. You do, and it, it's tough because that is more like I, I'm thinking in the creator space. You're either going quantity or going quality. You're going mm-hmm. high ticket, right? So if you got quality people, you're you can charge more, and you might offer subscription or something like premium experience. And I think when I'm thinking like Se- Seattle Mariners, how many high ticket people are you going to be able to like sell? I'm not, I'm not sure what the high ticket product is, which yeah. is why I'm having a tr- right. trouble like Dynasty, figuring it's, out. It's obvious. Yeah, and it's, it's very easy to sell things yeah. there. So for, for that specific niche, I'm, no, I'm not sure. But if I sat down for like an hour, I could probably think of a few different yeah. like product ideas that I think would work. And I think most of them are there. I think looking at other, other industries would probably help pop up ideas that are not even like sports related. For sure. I think helps a lot. So you're lucky you picked Arsenal, and you're gonna have content for days. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Um, any follow ups based on what we said? No, I mean I think it's like one that's obviously like it's easier said than done because sure. like regardless of if I go and have all these other great ideas, like people are typing into TikTok right now, Cheeto Obi, because he is scoring seven goals yeah. a game, and I'm the only person who is making. Full recaps of the goals, multiple different angles, my analysis on why he's so good at 16 years old and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Do you think he's the first and last great no, prospect? but it's going to be, you know, yeah. like it's helping that also Arsenal's biggest trans from last summer, like is hurt and playing, you know, the equivalent of a minor league stint yeah. to like get back up to fitness. Like, right. And at a the lot's end of- going right for me right now. So like my, I, and I, I agree with everything you're saying. I, I think the only thing all. you control is the work. It goes, it goes back to that. Like all, all the things you're naming are external factors. Yep. You can't create those. You can ride them, but they're going to ebb and flow. The only thing you can do is continue to fucking show up. So shut the fuck up and do the work, Will. (laughs) Dumb.